Let's grab the Mr. JJ. Well, hi, handsome. Are you ready? Hi, Mama Henny. Well, hi. Come here. Can you see him? Come on. This is where we get stuck. Let me see where my blue whip is, right here. Come on, buddy. So your biggest fear is ropes. Come on. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. Come on. Lots of blinking. Come on. All right. There we go. We're stuck. We're stuck. We're frozen. We're frozen. You gonna come to me? Come here. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. You're good. You're, you're good, Baba. You're good. You're so frozen. You get so frozen with fear. That's a good boy. Come on. Of course, I don't want it in your manure. Come on, babe. Good boy. You got it. You got it. It's so important, so important to help a horse. Learn how to come out of their self-preservation, whichever mode it is. And for his, it's being stuck, completely frozen. Um, you don't want to just go in there and grab him, and you got to do whatever you can to help him get out of that mode. He gets in that mode, help him get out of it. And during that process, he needs to, he needs to feel safe and comfortable. That is so key because that's what's going to help motivate him to come out of that self-preservation mode. So. The opposite of that would be a lot of your typical training methods where they would have come in here, he didn't come when they called him, so they just put a ton of pressure on him. Ton of pressure, ton of pressure. I'm gonna put some pressure on him to get him unstuck, to get him moving, to get him thinking, but I'm also gonna back off. I'm gonna wean off of the, wean out, you know, just back away from him a little bit and allow him to process, you know, wake him up, tune him in, get him engaged again. I'm gonna move him around to get him engaged and then back off, wean myself from the situation, meaning I'm not gonna to try to control it. I'm gonna say, okay, Jay, you're woken up, you're awake now, can you connect to me? Calling you, talking to you. Can you come to that? Cause that's the cue, right? That when he sees the door open and you call your horse, they come to you. So it's, it's a lot more complicated of a situation um, than most people realize because we're so used to micromanaging, taking over, controlling the situation, making it happen. I'm not here to make it happen. And so if you put a lot of pressure on a horse, you'll end up making it happen. They'll figure out one of two things that obviously if they come to you, you take the pressure off of them but it still doesn't teach them what needs to be taught. It doesn't teach them how to come out of their self-preservation mode. It doesn't teach them or show them that they can feel really safe and comfortable with you. So it's, it's definitely something that you guys need to think about when you're working with rehabilitation and recovery. Or you'll just be creating mechanics. And that's not going to get you where you need. Thank you, Boo. Well, I love that you're stepping into me and leaning into my space. This is new. We've been working a lot on this, you guys, every day.
So this is the best that it's been. <clears throat> so if anybody, I'm sure you all can see his chest here, this awful wound. He got that a week ago. A week ago, uh, we saw it Monday. Today's Monday, a week ago. Um, <clears throat> have no idea. My first gut guess was that he was rubbing. He has some scratch marks there and that he was rubbing up on our no climb fence. <clears throat> and because the hole isn't straight, it's straight and then down, it hooks, that it's uh, <clears throat> just makes sense to me that he was scratching on the no climb. And he, <clears throat> there's a piece of the wire was sticking out and it got hooked into him. So he's gonna be okay, just looks really ugly. But um, <clears throat> it's already been cleaned out. I've already cleaned it out this morning and put medic medication in it. Knock on wood, the flies have not, <clears throat> I'll leave that there, the flies have not gotten to it. We keep it really clean. He has not been, um, come on babe, not been out in the pasture for that reason too. And this is an uh, antiseptic gel. So we'll just leave that in there. And then I put ichthamol, your drawing salve, inside. I pack it too. It's really hard to keep anything in there <clears throat> because the heat and the healing process just keeps pushing it out. It's not that he's moving around that much. It just naturally pushes it back out. But the ichthamol <clears throat> also helps to heal it. And it's a drawing salve, so if there's any infection, which there isn't right now, he's on all sorts of drugs. And the vet's gonna be back out Tuesday, tomorrow. But um, the ichthamol also keeps the flies out. It's really awesome. So we're gonna take him to the round pen and work. Come on, buddy, good boy. We're a lot um, closer, for the lack of a better word, closer to me. He's not trailing behind so far. And so we haven't filmed Jay in a while. Let me grab that umbrella from you. It's starting to spit a little bit, but I think it's just a rain, a rain cloud. We haven't um, filmed Jay in a couple of weeks and he's finishing out the end of his, you can be able to hold that. I think you're okay right now, just come with me. He's finishing out, he's not a spooky horse. He's got the best temperament, this guy. He is such a nice horse. It's a shame what they've done to him. He's finishing out his first 30 days of rehabilitation here. And um, I recommended that he stay for a good, another good 30. I have not been on him, but I have, I've, I've kind of been on him. <laughs> I haven't ridden him though. So we're gonna show where his progress is since the last time. I think the uh, most effective week was the other week and we didn't film any of it. Sabrina was on vacation and Jay and I were working in the round pen every day and we're going to show you what we were working on because it's so important to a horse like him with his kinds, his type of issues and also being um, a riding horse and throwing his rider. The exercises that I'm working on with him are what, you know, they're the same that I would work on for any horse like him. But they're also exercises and techniques that I work on with every horse that comes to me. Come on, babe. Because I want them to be a well-rounded, well-educated horse. Um, so when I have a young horse or a new horse that comes to me for riding, they've got to learn specific things, the same things that Jay's learning. Let's see if I can fix this. The horses play and bang up on, against this round pen. They really mess it up. All right. Oh my. And then the rain gets to all this. 
Yeah, nasty. Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Caroline Best of the Dow of Horsemanship. This is Everything Horses and More YouTube channel and video library. And we are running a month long series <laughs> on JJ here, our horse that's in for rehabilitation and restarting under saddle. Hi Jay, this is our third week. He's been here going yeah, he's wrapping up his thir first 30 days here. He's gonna stay another 30 days. So this is our third week, and I'm gonna show all of you what we've been working on. We would have filmed his struggles, and the week wasn't last week, two weeks ago, <clears throat> where he made most of his breakthroughs, um, but Sabrina was on vacation, and you can't time that stuff. So it just is what it is. So we're gonna show you where he's at. And then we'll also film where he is in his second month of rehabilitation. So <clears throat> coming when you call has been a huge issue, if you guys remember. Good boy. Oh, good boy. Come on. You're stepping on your rope. Good boy, Jay. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. So every horse that I work with needs to learn. Good boy, let me um, take this off just because he's stepping on it. Needs to learn to come. He's, he goes, you okay, dude? Can you lower your head a little? Come here, look at that eyeball. Come here, don't panic, you're okay. Good boy, whoops, there you go. So I'll see if he'll come at, come to me freely I'll just leave that there. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. So ropes are a big deal for him, aren't they? And that's one of the ways that he was triggered when he was bucking, turned into a bucking bronc with his, his owner. He was triggered. <clears throat> so we've been working a lot with ropes and we were, we've been working a lot with driving and being in his blind spot and having ropes around him. Isn't that sad? This was a ranch horse and then a lesson horse. Good boy. So what we'd like to see is that he's trusting enough. Good boy. To reconnect with me and seek safety with me. So what would that look like? He would come in, he'd, he'd try. So he's looking at me, he's thinking about it, but he can't do it. Hey buddy. Hi, good boy, that's nice, good boy. Good. Yeah. There you go. Yep, you guys can hear and see all those signs of worry and stress. Yeah, good boy. This horse has been taught to do what he's asked to do, not question it, not express himself. Um, and he's really good at going through the mechanics and doing things until he can't take it anymore. And then he explodes. Now a lot of that is his nature, being willing and just really good tempered. And the other part of it, the equation is he's been forced, the mechanics and punished. All right, awesome, thanks guys. I look forward to your comments, questions. Remember, this is a snippet of the full length video found in my video library, Everything Horses and More. May you always be one with your horse. Thank you.